Hey folks, we are going to work on some modifications. Let me adjust the camera. Some modifications to the uh, blast cabinet. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to swap out guns because uh, I have a problem with that. Uh, the, the original setup that came with this Harbor Freight deal. We are going to modify the sight window here, all right, by adding some glass and some different types of screws. For about $20, okay, we're going to upgrade this location and set the conditions for easy replacement in the future, all right? I'll show you how I do that. Um, plus, I want to get rid of them freaking things because they're a pain in the butt. Anyhow, <clears throat> first thing I did was I have a, uh, I have the, when I first started doing all this stuff, I bought one of the bench top. Uh, cabinets right so just fits on the bench whatever and it had it came with this particular gun the stand-up case came with that gun all right now already there's a problem here because if you look at the little one here <clears throat> you notice that the pickup tube is angled right which promotes better flow all right this one is at 90 degrees. So your blast media has to travel up and then blow out. Up and then out. And so you've got a choke point here. Whereas this one is not so bad. Now, I don't have the money to go out and just buy a scat blasting gun or something from Eastwood that maybe has a little bit more of an angle on it. But this angle does promote better flow of material. So... The orifice is a little bit smaller. I don't know if this is even going to work for what I'm trying to do, but we're going to give it a shot. And then we're also going to modify the pickup tube because I've done a lot of research out there and there's a couple of mods. Well, there's mods I didn't make to mine. All I did was strap a damn tube to it and that was it. So we're going to show you how we fix that problem. All right, so I got the other gun on here. Looking forward to seeing how it works. And then... Uh, we're done with this. Now, what did I do with that uh, pickup tube? All right, kind of makes me look like a dumb dumb. Tube ought to be longer, first of all. We want to pinch off the end. We want to drill some holes, and so we can get some positive air movement through there. This is a tube within a tube, the original one that came with it, but you just can't get enough airflow through there, so. What we're going to do is create a situation where we have air coming through the tube, going into this tube, and recirculating back up. And then we're going to have another hole uh, that we're going to put in this tube up here to, to encourage air movement, all right, so we can pick up blast media. The way that it's currently designed is not working. This helped it a little bit, but we're going to make it so much better. And uh, we'll show you how we do that, okay? All right. So, let's start by getting this uh, this off. Now, if you've ever built one of these cabinets, there's about a million freaking screws and nuts, and, and they're tiny, and they're a pain in the ass. We're going to start by removing all of these. I'm not going to video that. Hang tight. I got what I could reach um, up front here, and uh, just sort of lifted this up, slid the old glass out, because I'm sorry, but my, my arms ain't long enough. And this is how we're going. This is how we're going to do it. Just so I can reach these locations. All right. Try to capture all your pieces. A little magnetic bolt, very helpful. And you'll notice this, this mod won't take that long. All right, so we've got the existing seal. We've got some, uh, some blast media that got up in there, so we'll go ahead and vacuum that up.
All right. So I went to the hardware store and I picked up some replacement screws. Let me find another magnetic tray. Hang on a minute. Now what I'm doing is I have these little 8 by 32 screws and I don't know what you call these type of uh, these flat nuts. That's what I'm going to call them. They're flat nuts! And I'm pushing the bolt up through the bottom. Okay, I'm going to put these little flat nuts on there. Call it what you may. I'll get it started. So as fate would have it, the uh, two of the clips that I bought are too small, and so I'm not running back to the hardware store to get two two clips. We're just going to get the thing put together. I'll feed the uh, the two bolts up to the bottom. But you can see here, now everything's stationary above the top here, right? And what we're going to go ahead and do is put the new piece of glass that I purchased. Uh, I got it for five bucks at Ace Hardware. It's just a, a single piece of glass, which um, I can't remember who gave me the tip because someone chimed in on my video uh, yesterday or the day before and said, hey man, why don't you put a piece of glass in there? It'll last a lot longer than those plastic freaking things. So I'm like, let's do it. Let's go get the glass. I tell you, I don't know what I would do without my uh, my local hardware store. And uh, J&W Hardware, that's who they are. I'm able to own stock in that place as much as I bought from them. Okay. They already had this pre-cut too. They didn't have to do it special. This particular cabinet, 12 inches, 24 inches, you're good to go. Now let's see if it actually fits. Gotta love these glass wipes. Okay. <laughs> Careful, Mike. surface I guess we'll know quickly if it doesn't seal let's grab the other piece because it's pretty funky is tempered but right now I got all this funk on there man so it's interesting look at look at how the glass tore up that piece of glass and uh, what you see there is the effects of the of the media hitting the actual glass itself where the Where, where the uh, the plastic didn't cover. So, what I'm gonna do real quick is find a razor blade and get this uh, glue strip off of there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and sandwich this piece on top of that one, see how she looks. You know, <clears throat> with all this junk in here, I'm talking, there's a lot of stuff in here. 
There, I swear to you, there's a gremlin, there's some little thing that runs around and steals all of your razor blades, all of your 10 millimeter sockets and wrenches, half inch drive, three eighths, they just disappear. You can find plenty of everything else. Anyhow, I found an old razor blade, so let's get to work. Hopefully that's gonna be good enough to scrape off some of that goo, and it is. See, who wants to do this kind of crap upside down while it's inside the cabinet um, and keep replacing these stupid plastic things? Technically, I should be cutting away from me, just for safety. All right, and we'll get most of the goo off. Plexiglass top. This is the stuff for the top side that protects it from anything that may have fallen on it or whatever. So yeah, we'll leave that plexiglass on there. Okay. Let's go set this on the screen and see how she looks. And set this right on top of the glass that we just bought. We still have the plexiglass film on there. And it's gonna slide a little bit. I if I did my math right. the line right back up the way they did before. Those two I gotta replace. to get caught in that lip okay remember I told you I have to feed these up through the bottom because I screwed up and got the didn't double check my uh, parts all right so that's it nice clean new lens now the piece that is this stance because I'm anal this way I got these cute little finished washers all right, we'll put the finish washers on there, and then I got wing nuts. Okay, that's it. Now I snug it down. So let's uh, let's time lapse this. As you go around and tighten these, all you're trying to do is just uh, snug it up where the sheet metal kind of comes back up and it's sealing again. You don't need to be freaking John Wayne about it. And over torque. Because when you're operating this thing and you've got the vacuum going, um, you know, you got air being sucked into where it needs to be sucked in. Just a hair. 
Okay. So that's pretty much it for that field mod. Nice durable. So we got a piece of plexiglass on the outside, protecting it from any chemical spills or whatever I got going on up here, which there are little flakes of stuff on there. Eventually I'll replace that, but man, I can see in this box like I've never been able to see before. Uh, much clearer than putting the plastic film in there. And we've got that layer of protection on the inside. So it'll be interesting to see how long that glass lasts, you know. Um, I don't do this a lot, so it's not like I'm, I'm doing any type of industrial level work. So it should last. But that's it, 20 bucks, piece of glass, some new hardware, and then when you're ready to replace it, you just pull the wing nuts, pull the frame, slap in a new piece, drop the flint frame, hook everything back up. All right, the new gun is, in, is installed. You can probably see that through the nice clear window. Um, we're gonna give that a shot, not until after we make a modification to the pickup tube. The original tube that came with this, you can see is double layered right here. Now, some genius thought that you'd be able to suck enough air up between these two pipes, and you can see where it's dimpled to try to create that space. That it would be enough to pull up, um, or excuse me, to draw down and to pull up. But I want you to take a look at this. Where the hell is it gonna draw its air from? From itself? Because as this is working, it's sucking both through this uh, position and here. There's no way for air to get into the system from this location, all right? Now, what we're gonna do here is I remove the copper pipe. We're gonna go smash one end of this and, and seal it up. I'm gonna extend the pickup, the, uh, the air tube here. You can see where I smashed it in a vise. <clears throat> and I'm going to tape this dude up. Okay, I'm gonna tape it up. Now I've got a uh, small drill bit here. Hell, I don't know what size it is. Uh, eighth of an inch maybe, who knows. Anyhow, I'm gonna drill through the two pipes, all right? I'm gonna get through this layer, this layer, and then this inside layer. And then once I make that pass, do not go all the way through. I'll go ahead and tape the entire thing up nice and tight, and so I have this hole covered. And hopefully these will be tight enough that uh, that nothing will leak through there. I know a lot of guys are welding this area or putting some type of a sealer in there. But, hey, until I order a tube that's designed to do the right thing. This is Watson's Field Mod. Let's get this thing in a vise. All right, drilled through into this pipe, not through the bottom. Now I'm just gonna simply seal that hole up by wrapping it with freaking electrical tape. There you have it. Let's assemble this dude, stick it inside, and see what happens. Now remember, the idea is that this is gonna go in the media, this is gonna draw in fresh air, and go through that hole that we created and assist in picking up the media by creating some form of vacuum as it picks up here.
Well, that went over like a fart in church. I swapped out the guns again. I took this one off. And my guess is, is that the passageways are too small, okay, to handle the volume that's required for the size of the media, maybe. So I put the old gun back on. Let's give that a shot. <clears throat> All right, let's get the air back on. Got an air leak. I hate it when that happens. You know something, watching it might help if you tighten up the clamps. Mm-hmm. Freaking sling blade, man. Leave it to me. It's all right. I like making mistakes in front of you guys. Get that plug back in. All right, let's give it a shot. Now that is a successful modification. Um, so it still pulsates. I've got the, the gun back in it. You can see that I was getting more media coming out and blasting the environment, so that's good. Uh, so maybe uh, in the future we'll just upgrade to a different type of gun that can handle the volume, and um, we'll go from there. So I'll continue to tweak it, but yeah, man, I can see so much better in here. Check it. All right, that's it. I got a lot of work to do. Take it easy, folks. Love you.